Welcome to the Content 10X Podcast. 10X Podcast. The show where content creators learn how to harness the power of content repurposing. And now, your host, Amy Woods. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Content 10X Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Woods, and this week I have a fantastic guest on the show. So my guest is Seagrin. She is a mastermind business coach, a TEDx speaker, the host of the Seagrin Show podcast. She's originally from Reykjavik in Iceland, but spent many of her life in the UK, Germany and Switzerland. And Seagrin's had various CEO positions throughout her career, but her dream was always to be location independent and live in different countries, travel the world, take care of her health. And in 2014, Seagrin started her online business And four years later, she's built a multiple seven-figure business and she helps women all over the world build their lifestyle businesses. So Sequin and I met many times, actually, social media marketing world, uh, podcast movement at Upreneur. And so Sequin, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. (laughs) Thank you so much for being on the show. Really, really great to speak to you. Um, And there's so much to talk about as well. You create so much great content. But before we get jumping into discussion, I know I did quite a bit of an intro there, but what did I miss in that intro? It must be something. (laughs) I moved with one suitcase to Germany when I was 20 years old. And I had had a dream uh, since I was 11 to be an architect. And I decided to follow that dream. And I think there are not so many that decide when they're 11 to do something (laughs) for the rest of their lives and really stick to it. There were a lot of people trying to talk me out of it. My parents, uh, my boyfriend at the time, (laughs) but 20 years old, I left with one suitcase, moved to Germany and decided to study architecture. So I felt like, hey, I'm, I'm doing what I've been deciding to do. And then two years before graduation, I realized Hmm. I think architecture is fun to study, but not as fun to work as an architect. There's basically one to 5% of your time is spent on designing. The rest is drawing up plans, arguing with engineers, where you can put this and that. And I was like, Ooh, that's not the job (laughs) that I thought I would do. And at the same time, the internet came out now. This already makes people realize how old I am. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So there were websites. We got an email address at my university and I thought, this is so exciting. And I was able to not really switch. I, I, I am a graduated architect. I'm a licensed architect. But I was able to do my final thesis at the computer science faculty and a new world opened up to me. I did a multi-user campus this is like back in 98 where nobody was doing anything like this. <laughs> uh, there was there was no, uh, there was like a forum, which means a forum that was a newsletter. Like, you know, people send an email and then the next day they get an answer. It's not like Facebook where you get instant feedback. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So when I was struggling with something during my thesis, I could just send an email to this list. And the morning after a guy, 55 year old guy in Seattle had replied. And that's how I could get my programming done. And yeah, I, I graduated as an architect, but with a computer science uh, project. And then this led to me getting a job at the computer science faculty. And that led to me being invited to study in Switzerland. And so one thing led to another. And suddenly I was full on in the software and IT world. And there was no turning back. That was amazing. And uh, I moved back to Iceland after Switzerland and got a job uh, at a software company. And I became like a project manager there, information architect, I called myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, uh, then the dot-com uh, crash came. So 2002, a lot of people lost their jobs uh, at these uh, IT companies that were basically burning money and not making enough revenue. And this led me to doing a course for women, how to start a business. And that led to me suddenly being in a software company, a website agency, a project manager, again, uh, uh, also taking care of sales. And one day that company was sold and I made a phone call and became a CEO. So I'm not going to go into all the details, but that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then how did you, um, what was the transition jump then into what you're doing today with your, um, with the masterminds and the coaching that you provide um, to people all over the world? So 
2004, I became a CEO. I was a CEO for uh, almost 10 years and initially in Reykjavik, Iceland. And then I met my husband in 2008, 10 years ago. We met in London, Tony Robbins in London. Wow. And then I dis- then again, I moved with one suitcase from Iceland to Switzerland. Uh, I had lived in Switzerland before, so that helped. And after six months on the hunt for a job, um, I found a job very close to uh, where I lived. And But that job was very different from my CEO job before. I sat a lot at my desk. There were not many meetings, not many breaks. And I developed uh, illness, uh, repetitive strain injury, which comes of, often happens, unfortunately, to people who sit a lot at the computer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was unable to work for seven months. And then I really started to think about my dream is really to have my own business. I was running other people's businesses all the time, helping them make money and being an employee myself and not really receiving much beyond that. And I said, it's time, but I was still scared. I didn't have a business idea. I took another job, lost that after 15 months. And I said, okay, being sick for seven months, uh, losing your job twice in two years, if that's not a sign, I don't know what other signs you should be looking for. And that's when I just started. I, I had no business plan, which is very unusual for someone who has an MBA and all this business experience. I basically started without a business plan. I just was in Facebook groups and just saw what was happening. And I saw people struggling with uh, tech in the beginning. So I started doing webinars on Canva and MailChimp and lead pages. And I realized that's not really my zone of genius. You know, my zone of genius is strategy and helping people basically make money. And uh, so I moved my webinar slowly into that direction. And uh, so basically I started my business in 2014. Uh, I made my first $180 in March. <laughs> it was the best $180 I've made in my life. <laughs> uh, somebody came to my website and clicked on one hour business coaching. Uh, since then, uh, I've raised my prices drastically. Now one hour costs $1,000. Um, but I've also proven that uh, my strategies and methods work. And uh, from there on, I started one-on-one. And in 2015, I started to offer groups. And I realized actually my programs were more of masterminds than group programs. And I de- developed three levels of masterminds, depending on what stage people are in. And in 2017, I, I introduced my signature program, Samba, which basically is short for Sigrun's Online MBA, uh, because I had not really learned about online business in my MBA. And I thought this was a missing piece in the puzzle. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then I launched my podcast in uh, August 2017. Wow, well, that's a, um, an amazing story. <laughs> and what you're doing today, that's fantastic. So what I want to focus on, as, as you and I chatted just before the call, is I'm so interested to know what you're doing with your podcast and the and how you're on Alexa now and everything that you're doing over there. But um, firstly, just to ask you, um, why did you start the podcast and what difference have you seen it made it, it be made to, you know, to yourself and to your business? Wow. I I had this idea for a while, but I had a business coach uh, back in the days. The first time I had the idea to start a podcast where she discouraged me from it. And I guess I had some doubts myself. I think you cannot blame it on a business coach when you don't do something. But I guess I just had doubts like, what's the benefit? What's the financial benefit? Like, this is free. Um, uh, but I had been blogging and I, 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 I hadn't blogged enough. Like, I think I still just have 30 blog posts. I was really a lazy blogger. <laughs> uh, but I was really good at my weekly webinars. I did weekly webinars for one and a half years. I did 100 webinars in uh, 1,100 days. So probably 11 days apart. Yeah. So I really, I could see that I, even though I think consistency is one of my weaknesses, I know when I commit publicly to doing something, then I do it. And I, and I got tired of the webinars. And obviously, I was not going to go back to blogging. So I was like, oh, what's left? Podcasting. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, we have the opportunity of Facebook Lives as well. But we know Facebook Live, they kind of, after a few days, people don't see them anymore. So yeah. for me, podcasting was a, a long-term strategy. I know there's no overnight success. I really saw that something you have to do for a year to see if you benefit from it. And I was willing to do that. And this was at a point where uh, my business was 
Uh, in 2016, I made 340000 in my business. And I started the podcast August 2017. So yeah. So it was always in the back of my head for a long time, but I had my doubts. Then I went to social media marketing world, probably where we met already in yeah. uh, 2017. <laughs> and there was a podcast track and they've actually made the podcast track bigger and better over the years. And I listened to John Le Dumas and Pat Flynn and those guys that everybody knows. And I was like, okay, okay. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But the inspiration, the be- most, the biggest inspiration were, was Kate Erickson. She was the last speaker on the last day. And she said, here's how it looks. She showed a picture of a laptop and a simple microphone and her had, you know, kind of her earbuds from, uh, you know, uh, from her iPhone. And then she said, I read my blog posts. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so simple. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, was, I, was, I was magnifying the project. Like I was making it so big in my head. And uh, now in hindsight, it's not a big project once it's running. It's a project in the beginning, but once it's up and running and you have a process, it's, it's not a big thing. It just be, becomes a part of your business. It's like doing a Zoom, Zoom call with your group or something. Yeah. Um, but in the beginning, it is a project. And I knew I wanted to do something different. Uh, also at the same conference was uh, Mark Schaefer, who wrote the book Known. And his book was all about how do you get known? How do you become basically famous? Um, and he interviewed 100 people. And one of the guys he interviewed was a military guy who was selling suits online. And he was not having success doing it until he decided to do something different. He did 200 YouTube videos in 200 days. None of the videos went viral, but just the stamina of doing it and each video getting several hundred views, his mm-hmm. business started to take off. And I was like, that was a light bulb moment for me. Like, that's what I want to do. Wow. <laughs> so then I decided to 100 episodes in 100 days. Everyone said it's a crazy project. But, you know, I found an editor who kind of also fell in love with the project, gave me a good discount. I think I paid like half price for the first 100 <laughs> wow. episodes in terms of editing costs. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. she fell in love with the project. And mm-hmm. now she has a story to share too. So it was like a win-win situation. And uh I started to create this massive Excel sheet with all the you know the topics I want to cover, the people I want to interview, and my two first guests were Kate Erickson and Mark Schaefer. The inspiration were the first guests on the show. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And 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 then I guess you know after you did the hundred episodes, did you and then you moved to a more a more regular schedule then after that then to to what it is today. Yeah. yeah, I do three a week, which is okay. still a little bit a crazy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, mm. uh, uh, but I wanted, uh, I have so many stories. I'm a storyteller. I, I love telling stories. I've told stories since I was a child. And so I wanted that space for myself. At the same time, I, I know all these amazing people. You know, you know when you attend so many conferences, you meet so many amazing people or you see guests on stage or speakers on stage um, that you think like, oh, it would be great. And it's a great way to network. So when you have a podcast, you can easily walk up to a speaker and say, hey, can I interview you? Mm-hmm. And in most of the times, like 99%, they say yes. Uh, so if you don't have a podcast, you wouldn't necessarily connect with these people. So I had these two things. On one hand, I wanted to share some stories and I wanted to have the guest speakers. And then uh, I had heard about someone or actually seen someone do on-air coaching. And I thought, that is so smart. Basically, I interview or I coach my clients. So they have to be a part of my paying program and they can apply to come on my podcast with a challenge. So you have to kind of also dare to do it. Uh, not everyone, a lot of people are shy or scared <laughs> and don't do it. But yes, so basically I had this three different types of shows or episodes I wanted to do. And then it was perfect for me to then do three a week. And it's not always, you know, one solo, one guest, one on air. It's sometimes mixed depending on how I'm recording it or how close we are to the schedule. But that was the idea. And I've been doing that since the 100 episodes. Now I am going to shift and change. So as of February next year, I'm going to go actually to one episode a week Mm. because I think I've kind of, I've become a good podcaster. We have a fantastic process. I think I'm getting good at interviewing people. And 
I think when you take on a massive project, you have to at some point say, okay, maybe this is enough. And it will be exactly 300 episodes when I shift over to one a week. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? And and as you said, you know that you won't struggle at all with the consistency, given that it's a medium that you're really good at and you've grown to love. So um, it makes sense to kind of shift things up a little bit, but stay consistent. That's the main thing. Um, And so obviously everything's going really, really well with the podcast. It's a brilliant show. I love um, the on-air coaching. I, I think it's just such a great you know, example of the behind the scenes of what you can, how you can help people and how you coach people as well, which is, is really, really good. Um, so what it's now, I know that you now have content on Alexa. What gave you the idea? What, why did you think, hmm, okay, let's see if we can repurpose some of these podcast episodes over to Alexa. Where did that idea come from? So before I dive into that, I think I missed a part of your question before, like <laughs> what's the benefit of the podcast? So yeah. Uh, the, the reason I did it was obviously content creation, uh, uh, because I had, we know we have to create content and blogging and video was, yeah, I thought podcast would be best for me. Uh, the benefit I launched in August, 2017. And one of my goals for 2017 was to make a million dollars. Now, just before I launched the podcast, I was at 340,000 in revenue for the year. And I was going into a launch a month later, so I knew I would make several hundred thousand. Um, but I tripled my income in the last four months. Wow. Now, <laughs> now, I cannot say it's just the podcast. You know, I did a launch where I run Facebook ads. I did a live event with 90 people. Um, so everything kind of came together, but I do think the podcast did play a big role. Uh, I think... Typically, I see that the listeners are people that are on my list. They are my clients, but then they share it with other people. And that word of mouth, we know that word of mouth is big to get more people to listen to your podcast. It's kind of difficult to run ads to it. Um, you can, but I found the biggest success being word of mouth. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think it has had massive impact. It builds authority in a totally different scale. And as I said before, it enables you to network with people on a different level because it's so easy to say, come on my show. You know, uh, last night I was, had an interview with Ali Brown. She's the godmother of online business. I would not have had that interview if I didn't have a podcast. No, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? And I think that you open up your, you know, the, the reach in terms of who you are, who, who, how people are finding you and the fact that there's some people who, you know, only have ever really listened to podcast content. They're not so much on social media and things like that. And you're going to be just found by different people, aren't you? And I do think with podcasts as well, that when you have heard of somebody and you're checking them out and you go to Google and you land on the website, if you see that they have a podcast, um, and you start to listen, you can just get captivated by that person, can't you, in a way that I think you don't necessarily, it doesn't always necessarily happen if you find their Facebook page or it's too distracting. <laughs> Whereas yeah. I, I do think that you can become, if somebody seems like a great fit for you, for example, for you as, as a coach or somebody who helps people with business, if people become quite captivated by you and your content, then that's just so powerful. And that's something that podcasting, I think, has over most other mediums, really, that it's just you and them. And, and, and it's the way that you captivate people. So it's yeah. an amazing story, though, um, in terms of obviously, like you said, you can't isolate the podcast, but it obviously did have a massive impact in terms of you achieving that goal, didn't it? So, um, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Um, so, yeah, so... so Coming then, back to the Alexa uh, yeah, question. So what, what gave you, yeah, what was the, the spark, like the idea that maybe it would be a good idea to, to get in on Alexa, basically? So uh, I I bought the book Crushing It with uh, uh, Gary V. I'm yeah. a Gary V fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would I would say I'm a super fan, although I don't watch his videos. I I, I love to see him speak, and I read his books. And uh, I read the book, uh, and in the last chapter of the book, it says, uh, "Voice first is the future." And he made a very good case that uh, we have a busy lifestyle. Well, you know, people are commuting or they are doing fitness or, or they are just cleaning up the house or walking around. And that's why talking to a device and getting an answer back 
is the future. It saves us time and we don't have to sit at the computer or like in my case, you know, I still have parts of my RSE. I'm not, I'm not fully healed from it. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, typing on my phone all the time, that's not a good thing to do. I I, I still, I sometimes do it, but (laughs) it's better for me if I just train myself to talk to advice and talks back. And we know we have this capability already through our phones. And uh, I didn't have an Alexa yet, but I fell in love with this idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, shortly afterwards, he announced uh, a voice first conference. It was the first conference on this topic in New York. And I decided to go. It was a one day event and I invested in doing that. And I, you know, I did a photo shoot the next day or the day before or something. So I combined it with another thing. Uh, and that was really amazing. I, I, I felt like, oof. And actually, I managed to launch my Alexa just before I went to the conference. So that was my deadline. Oh, so I wow, got the yeah. idea probably in February 2018. I don't know exactly when the book came out or I read it. I read it very quickly afterwards. <laughs> and the conference was in May. And the first thing that I did, I reached out to my podcast editor and I said, how do we go on Alexa? And uh, she had not done it with anyone else before. So she checked that out. Turns out, you know, I'm, I'm, I host my podcast on Libsyn. Yeah. So it's just another lips and feet, basically. Mm-hmm. And the only difference is there's just every, uh, every episode is just valid for a day. So you only get this day, this episode. Yeah, they're like the briefings, basically, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's, briefings, it's, it's they're like called. Yeah, there's briefing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there are skills and briefings. Mm-hmm. Skills is when you can talk back and forth. Uh, and it's kind of like it has to be really programmed. Okay. The briefings are easy. They are more like a podcast. So it's just an episode. So I said, well, that's easy enough. Uh, and then uh, we were discussing in the team, like the length of it. You know, I know that I think John Le Dumas managed to be quicker than me on Alexa. And he mm-hmm. has like a three minute thing. And I listened to it and I felt it was too long. I listened also to a fitness guy and I felt also that was too long. So I was like, okay, I think it needs to be like 60 or 90 seconds. Yeah. So what I did, uh, because all my pet podcast episodes are transcribed, uh, I went back to uh, the stories, mainly my own stories, obviously not the guest speakers and the honor coaching, but I went to my own stories and I decided to script uh, the episodes um, because how do you get to exactly 90 seconds? I realized 60 seconds was too short. I couldn't really finish a story. So mm-hmm. 90 seconds after a few trials and errors, I decided on 90 seconds. And it's 240 words. And that's why I scripted it. That was my original idea. I have to script it to make sure it's exactly 90 seconds and not like two minutes or three minutes because I really didn't want it to be boring and going on forever. And did your times that, so you had all the transcripts anyway, so they were there. So did they, um, had you got time stamped time transcripts where you could kind of almost pick out the, the best 90 seconds? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they're oh, transcribed. Wow, that's brilliant. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I felt as I was taking things from the transcripts, sometimes I felt I had to write something up in the front and back. So yeah, yeah, I did repurpose my transcript, but I did really read them well through and change things up. And 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 some of the episodes I wrote from scratch. I didn't feel that the, no, I had the idea. So let's say sometimes when you want to repurpose something, you have an episode on it, but there's no part exactly what I want to say. So I, I'm creating more of a summary of the whole episode in 90 seconds instead of doing 30 minutes. So the idea, it, it saves me time because I don't have to come up with a new idea, but there wasn't a, a, a text I could take over completely. So yeah. it was a mix. It was a mix of different things. Uh, sometimes I could take it fully over. Sometimes I just had to edit the beginning and the end. And sometimes I wrote it from scratch. Yeah, I think it's it's more the fact that you put that original thought into the first if the first episode, didn't you? And, and and all of that. So you're not having to, like you said, think from scratch. But I imagine it would be pretty hard to find, you know, an exact standalone 90 seconds that would add value without at least adding, you know, a little bit to it and changing it. But it, I guess it's more just picking out what were the main 10 points or what was what, what were the main ideas and concepts that I've put across in this episode isn't it and then how can I bundle that up into sections of 90 seconds that add value and so you so you you did that so you did all the recording then what was the actual process to to make this you know something live basically and get it onto Alexa 
So uh, I also did research of like intro and outro, and we realized that okay. there isn't really an intro and outro. So you keep it really short. Mm. I, I, I start right away with the text. So there's no intro. Okay. Uh, and the outro is just for more inspiration, go to signal.com. Like, yeah, just snappy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> really, really, because there's no time if you want to keep it short. No. What I did though, because I wanted really to have my own, uh, uh, let's say, brand on it or flavor. Uh, the, the, the podcast editor, um, I think it's her husband or partner that does the, did the music for my podcast. And I said, can we do a little music, just a mm -hmm. tiny snippet of 10 seconds in the beginning and the end. So it just has like, people get used to it. So that becomes my brand more than doing an actual, uh, vocal intro. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just nice for that kind of recognizable um music that sound isn't it like you said it's just branding the the, the voice and the sound just so people can uh, uh, like regularly recognize that as being you isn't it yeah so then we set up the feet on Lipson and mm. um and then uh we did actually hire a guy we paid like five hundred dollars somebody who had set it up before but actually uh, as I did another podcast episode on how to do this I just looked it up myself so mm. actually you can go on Amazon you just type in Amazon Alexa and there is instructions exactly how to do it. Typically, you will set up uh, a new Amazon account because, you know, my Amazon account, my credit card is on there with a lot of information. Uh, so we just created a new account from another email address. Uh, and then you create a developer account. And in this developer account, you have to fill in the title of your show. You have to have a description. You have to have the logo that fits into the round circle of the Alexa branding logo. And you have to have what you should say to Alexa or what Alexa should say about your show. It, but it's very clear. It's like a form. You fill out a, it's almost like a type form. You just fill it out and, um, you give them a snippet of one of your episodes and that's it. And then you, 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 you put in the feed basically of the lips and feet, and then it will get approved. It's pretty easy process. And when you said that you give them the command, so is that what a person should say to Alexa in order for the briefing to be delivered to them? No, you can actually just, we can just say, uh, if I say start my day to Alexa, and I have subscribed. So I go on my phone. I have Alexa um, app. Yeah. Uh, and on my phone, I subscribe to CNN, to Sigrun Sparks, to uh, Gary, three, uh, I think it's called 365, Gary 365. And then that becomes my briefings. Okay. The idea with briefings is that's what you listen to in the morning. So you shouldn't subscribe to too many. Maybe you have three, four, five. Mm. And uh, then you say to Alexa, Alexa, start my day. Right, I say. Okay. And then it plays in, in the order that it's uh, subscribed to, you know, CNN, Gary Vee, Sigrun Sparks. Cool. And if you get bored of a briefing, you unsubscribe from it, typically from your phone, because I find that's the easiest to do it on the app on the phone. Mm. If you want to play it some other time of the day and you don't want to hear about the weather or the commute or whatever else can be put into the briefings, uh, you can just say, uh, uh, play the Sigrun show or something. Sigrun uh, mm -hmm. Spark, sorry. Yeah, you can, you just can call it up. No, the, no, the, no, the, the command you, you have to give to uh, Alexa when you uh, fill out that form is more what Alexa says I about see. when they start the show. Yeah, right, but it, it's kind of obvious when you fill out the form what you should do. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and so you, you've filled out the form and, you know, obviously everything that you got accepted onto Alexa. Yeah. Um, and as you said, it's really interesting what you said, actually, that it's only uh, kind of, it, it lasts for 24 hours, which of course makes sense because it's the per, a person's, within a person's briefings on that day, isn't it? And then it goes to the next day. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I know up front, this is going to be aired on Monday, Tuesday, okay. Wednesday. So actually yeah. I, have, I have episodes that says, happy Friday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you've got to put it in to Libs in exactly the same, the right dates yeah. and everything. So how did you, how did you go about educating your followers already to embrace this and to, to add you to their briefings every day? Oh, that's the most difficult piece. <laughs> uh, so I went, of course, I did a Facebook Live. I yeah. did a podcast episode uh, about this and I emailed my list and, you know, I gave them instructions how to do it. So what happened was a lot of people bought Alexa because of me. 
Oh, oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get an Amazon commission for that? Yeah, I should have. I should, should have. have. <laughs> but the downside was uh, Amazon is not as not as such an open system like Apple mm. in the yeah. fact that if you are in Germany and your Alexa is set up in German, you will not be able to play my briefings because I have a developer account in the US and my briefings are in English. Right. And I met someone from Amazon at this Voice First conference, and I said, this is ridiculous. I have an audience in, in Germany and other s- countries that are not English speaking, and they can't, uh, you know, I think even in the UK, you will have the issue playing something in the US. It's, it's, it's totally ridiculous. Um, and so they, they have not fixed that. And of course, people at Alexa couldn't listen to my show and I was like, okay, what do I do? Because I felt this was on me. Like I, I did not realize this and they have this device there. So what we did for those people who do not have, I actually have people who listen to it and we, we can see it from the download numbers. There are people in listening to the show, uh, but I think it's, it's really small still at this stage. Like it's, um, and it's important to name your show. Maybe I shouldn't have called it Sigrun Sparks, but I just want to get my name because that's my branding. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you call it like, there was somebody smart enough to get on there early and say, inspire me. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> so when you say to Alexa, inspire me, that's the briefing that comes up. Mm. So you can own a name. Like there's a company that owns Happy Hour. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> so, it is better if it actually is something that's people looking for. But I knew that upfront and I still decided to go for Sacred Sparks because it, for me, it's a branding thing and I don't need massive downloads. I've done it. I have listeners and, and it's great because I'm going to just get into what other content I created from this. But we set up a second podcast, like a proper podcast. So that's called Sacred Sparks. And that is just like my Sacred show. People can subscribe to it. They can listen on iTunes, Spotify, whatever. And then my audience in Europe that couldn't get access to my American show, they were happy. Yeah. Yeah. So what we were saying earlier about on Alexa, where the episodes are just for the 24 hours and they're gone. I guess that that is the case on Alexa. But of course, actually, people can access them at, at any time because you've also got them running as a, a separate evergreen podcast as well. Yeah, but yeah. That's, a, that's a third feed. So basically, okay. I have to have three feeds because of this. So I have my original podcast and then I have two Sigrun Sparks feed. One is just for Alexa. And okay. one, is, one is for iTunes and Spotify. You, can, you can't combine it because the other one expires. Oh, uh, yeah, four right. Hours. I see. Okay. So you, re, you, you reuse the recording onto another feed so that it goes out as a separate. Yeah. So people yeah, can listen sense. to previous episodes. Yeah. yeah. And so what has been, you know, what's been the reaction? You said you've obviously people were buying um, even Amazon uh, Alexis to listen to you. But, you know, have, have people been really positive about about being on Alexa and if you got good feedback and good downloads. Yeah. yeah. So people love it. Yeah. Uh, I could do a better job at advertising it, but you know, one way is to talk about it with you here today, but I, I could do a better job at advertising it. It's kind of difficult, something on Amazon. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I could, you know, it's on Amazon, so it's not really on my website. If you come to my website, Currently, you wouldn't know about it. Now, I'm, I'm going through rebranding and we'll have a new website in January, February next year. And um, then I will definitely have like a special uh, Alexa website that is more visible. I have it somewhere on my website, but I want to make it more visible so people actually know that exists. So, yeah, I think that's always the issue with a podcast or anything like that, Alexa. Mm-hmm. It's just you have to do a lot of promotion to let people know and you have to educate them how to do it. I, I set up something for my parents. So, so there's like a, something you can, you can set up recipes on Alexa. So I have a recipe for my parents on their Alexa. I bought an Alexa for them. Uh, sure. And the recipe is that nine o'clock every morning, it plays my briefing automatically. Yeah, that's great. So they don't even have to ask for it. It just no. comes on. <laughs> and I think that's that's it. People are yeah. still not used to this and asking no. for it. So you just have to kind of make it almost like a radio and then just radio goes on at 9 a.m. Yeah, I think it's it, the challenge is exactly as you said, isn't it? It's not convincing people that you're the person to listen to. It's convincing people of the actual 
medium itself yeah. you know there's there's two steps of education isn't there that uh-huh. need to be I suppose it's a I mean it's still to some extent like that even in the podcasting world isn't it where there are a lot of people that don't listen to podcasts and you first have to explain that podcasts are great and then it's like I'm listening to mine yes. <laughs> um, but it, this is a, another step further but I think it, I think it's amazing what you're doing and you're being you know obviously you're very progressive with this and that one of the you know first people that I've spoken to who's actually getting into Alexa and already on there and doing things because it seems to be something that I know a lot of people say to me I should look into that and it's a good idea but they're not really doing it so it's great to actually know that you are doing it and that it's going well and Mm. it's only going to improve as more people start to use um, flash briefings as we're talking I'm thinking about what you said around it being an Amazon obviously Amazon only because that's what Alexa is and I'm wondering um, if for Siri and uh, Google Home do they, if they have flash briefings in the same way for the yeah people, I'm on there too so yeah. are you, that's yeah I was just going to say so yeah, you're on I did the whole it. thing yeah, yeah I did the whole okay. thing so it's not actually just Alexa, yeah, it's no. any of them. You were flash briefing on any of them. That's that's really cool. And were you able to set the others up in a similar straightforward that, way then? No, no. no. <laughs> that's, where we, that's where we really needed the help of this guy that we hired. Uh, yeah, so that was a bit more complicated. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was a bit more complicated mm-hmm. and took much longer. And uh, I would get help doing that, just yeah. the Amazon process. I'm saying Alexa all the time because that's they've been on the market the longest and people are most used to it. And even though I'm a total Apple head, I do have Alexa on my table. And I have actually an Alexa that has a screen on it. So, <laughs> do you really? <laughs> yeah. So my... Uh, I, I will probably, when I do new episodes in the new year, um, possibly do some on video because that's where uh, the latest devices, they are with video as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I've, I've seen those as well and um, been thinking about potentially that being my Christmas present. Yes. <laughs> um, it looks really cool. So, so yeah, no, uh, I think if you can combine them, then it, it's brilliant, isn't it? And, you, you know, why not? If you can, then it's a good thing to do. Um, yeah. So, oh, well, you know, I guess like I should probably be wrapping up soon, but thank you so much for um, sharing all of this. I think it's such an interesting conversation for somebody who's done so well in podcasting to be so progressive in being in, you know, all these flash briefings. You've definitely inspired me to actually um, look into this. When we were both at Podcast Movement in um, July, one of the talks that left, I suppose, I the most thought for me and really inspired me was around this it was a voice search voice Mm. is the future Um, and it was a lot of talk about there is that education piece of educating people on these smart speakers and obviously they were talking more about podcasting than the, the, the flash briefings but the education piece on getting people to to use them but they're really going to take off they are going to be the future and it's funny even when I you know my son is only four and he 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 talks to Alexa constantly he's four he's like Alexa play Michael Jackson Alexa yeah (laughs) it's so funny you know you see the future you watch you watch them fight you know who gets to speak to Alexa it's much easier for them so uh, for us because uh you know I have to train myself I I, I'm not like (laughs) I guess it's just because you are much older than uh you know and the kids can do it so easily but I wanted to share one more benefit that came out of the Alexa process which I think is important one in terms of repurposing. Okay. As I'm scripting all these Alexa episodes, I realize I have in my hand mini blog posts and I get all excited because suddenly I have in front of me 30 minute blog posts. And I told you earlier that I had only actually written 30 proper blog posts in 2014 when I started my business. And suddenly I just wrote in one and a half days, 30 mini blog posts. I recorded them and they went on Alexa and are now on my podcast, my second podcast. But I realized I can put this on social media. And I asked my uh, online business manager if she could find images for each of these 30 mini blog posts. And she puts them into Planoly, which is a scheduling tool for Instagram. And it's automated. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we yeah. actually turned off the automation because I do have also pictures I want to post myself. But they're ready inside my Planoly. And what happened as a result... I finally started to gain followers on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. So amazing kind of repurposing potential. 
on yeah. social media. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, what you said about you've got blog posts, you, you've got the content there that you can put over onto Instagram. And I guess um, just thinking further about the repurposing. So when you are even recording these short 90 seconds, they're all, they could all be little videos on Insta, you know, yes. TV, Instagram, Twitter. Well, they're, they're so short that they're 60 seconds is Instagram posts, but pretty much they're so short that you can get on all the platforms the short videos. You can slice them up into little 15 seconds and tease a little bit on Insta stories, can't you, as well? And um, totally. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's yeah. loads. When there, you, there are more opportunities, but I was already yeah. so happy to discover like, oh, yeah. wow, I have discovered two yeah. unique ones. And uh, I saw so many people writing these mini blog posts on especially Instagram. And I was like, oh, how do people do it? And suddenly mm. I was like, oh. I've just done it myself. Yeah, you're doing it. You didn't even realize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you just need to leverage it. And as as you were saying, I'm sure straight away, put those systems in place and um, away they go, basically. And then they're going to be ready for you to post out on social. And it, and it just goes to show that you said you start to get more followers, that as soon as you start becoming consistent on any of the platforms, you, you start to see followers don't you people start to engage with you a little bit more as well so yeah um, so if somebody who's listening right now and they're completely inspired to to get started with um a, a voice briefing um what would you say would be the great kind of just first step if they're thinking i'm going to get started with this what should they do as a first initial step well I have a podcast episode on how this process works. So that's one step. Listen to that. (laughs) Listen to that. That's one step to take. Uh, Another one is to get really clear on what you're going to talk about because it goes fast, you know, coming up with 30 topics because I always uh, record one month ahead and my team wants it like 10 days in advance. So you kind of have to have this really mapped out. Don't go into it if you cannot come up with easily 60 topics. Um, So that is kind of, I find that takes me the most time. And what I did last time I was recording, I actually, uh, because my husband helps me in my business, I said, can I give you, uh, can you come up with uh, 30 topics for me? Because he knows my business and, you know, knows what I talk about. And that just helped me a lot. I think that takes me the most time coming up with topics, even if I've been doing 260 episodes on my podcast, that's still when I draw a blank, especially on the pressure. If you're Mm. like, oh, today I have to write, you know, whatever, 15 mini blog posts. It's better you do this in a quiet moment and and brainstorm. And if you have a team or, or buddies or mastermind colleagues, like come be sure that you have a lot of topics to talk about before you go into this process. Because what is really bad, I see so many people start Alexa and stop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah plan 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 and you know have lots and lots of, of ideas and the plan in place before you even get started isn't it and get really far ahead as well like you were saying yeah. about your team want you to always be 10 days ahead but if you you want to get much further ahead than that really don't you so um yeah no, thank you so much so that was amazing it's such a great um episode for my listeners um where should people go if they want to get in touch with you obviously i'll put all the links to everywhere but just where would be the, the preferred way of getting in touch and finding out more about you? So obviously the Sigrun show, which is my yep. main podcast, uh, and then Sigrun.com. Yep. Cool. Okay. Well, I shall put all the links in the, in the link to the podcast episode that you mentioned as well. So I'll put all of that in the show. Um, great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really, really appreciate it. It's been a great conversation. Thank you so much for having me. 